For the past 70 years, humanity has relied on expensive, carbon-rich fossil fuels to send rockets outside of Earth's atmosphere. But in the near future, we may also use another method that relies primarily on kinetic energy, which is built up by spinning a rocket thousands of miles per hour in a centrifuge and then releasing it out of the launcher at hypersonic speeds. That's the promise of Spin Launch, a California-based startup that is developing a new, potentially revolutionary way to send satellites into orbit. If successful, Spin Launch's technology would cut down on launch costs, allow for more frequent launches, and be less damaging for the environment. This is The Business of Space, a series about the innovative startups capitalizing on a growing commercial space industry. I, like many others, really have always wondered if we sent a man to the moon, you know, in, in the 1960s, you know, why don't we have further exploration and development and commercialization and colonization of this frontier? What is the limiting factor here? Ten years ago, just as the commercialization of space was beginning, Spin Launch CEO and founder Jonathan Yaney began investigating rocket launch technology to see if he could solve a problem that has dogged the launch industry since its inception. Why is sending rockets into space so expensive? The more and more you look at it, you realize that they are just simply limited by physics, the physics of the rocket equation. In order for a rocket to leave Earth's atmosphere, it requires large amounts of energy. Historically, this energy has come from multi-stage rockets filled with massive amounts of propellant. That reality is best captured in an over 100-year-old equation, which states that a rocket's change in velocity depends on the exhaust velocity and the ratio of total mass to fuel mass. What the equation tells us is that in order to generate enough momentum to leave Earth's atmosphere, a rocket's mass must be mostly rocket fuel. Today, about 95% of the mass of most rockets, like SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, is fuel. Spin launch replaces about 80% of the fuel required to get to orbit with clean, renewable-based electricity. Spin launch isn't the first to attempt an alternative method to get rockets into orbit. For decades now, scientists have explored creative solutions like space elevators, maglev-propelled launch systems, space hooks or tethers, and others to get into space. In the 1960s, the US and Canadian governments collaborated on Project HARP, which made use of ballistic technology to shoot objects into the upper atmosphere. Space planes, which combine features of an airplane with a spacecraft, are another option. One of the more notable examples is the Space Shuttle, which operated from 1981 to 2011. More recently, Virgin Galactic's VSS Unity completed its first fully crewed mission in July of 2021. Spin Launch's technology can be described as a centrifugal slingshot. It is a 50,000 year old idea. It is a sling launch system that is a rotational launch capability, a rotational mass accelerator that accelerates the launch vehicle up to about 5,000 miles an hour. 170 Gs, Mach 0.3 and it glides through the atmosphere and out of the atmosphere and into space before you know, launching a very small rocket. Once the craft reaches the outer atmosphere at an altitude of about 60 kilometers, it uses a small rocket engine to push it the rest of the way. It doesn't have emissions in the atmosphere and it represents the only alternative to chemical propulsion and combustion. Until its public test launch last year, Spin Launch had been in stealth mode for seven years as Yeni and his team worked on developing the technology from scratch. We had to start with really the core concept. And so we built a laboratory version, the one here behind me, the 12 meter. Spin Launch's A12 is a 12 meter prototype centrifuge that tests the ability of various payloads to endure the high G environment they would experience while being accelerated. The A12 is a really great test platform for engineers. So for today's launch, we're going to be operating just above Mach 1, so a little bit less than 1,000 miles per hour, so faster than a jet, approximately the speed of a bullet. This is a one meter flight test vehicle and it'll be vaporized at the end of the tunnel as it impacts in just moments from now. So now we're approaching Mach 1. We're approaching 90% of the launch velocity for today's test. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Success awesome. Launch. The Wright brothers you know, had to build a very you know, small 
aircraft in the beginning, which was a test prototype, which you know couldn't cross oceans or carry passengers, but it absolutely demonstrated you know the core technology uh, in, in a meaningful way that allowed you to build upon. In October 2021, the company successfully completed its first test on its suborbital accelerator, or A33. So the first test launch that we did in New Mexico at the suborbital facility was really a key inflection point in the maturity of the technology as a whole. So prior to that, we had only operated in our 12 meter diameter accelerator. And in that platform, you weren't launching into the atmosphere, right? And so this was a big transition for us to go from laboratory testing to actually operating in the field with a large scale system that's launching into the atmosphere. On April 6th, Spin Launch announced a partnership with NASA to develop, integrate, and fly a NASA payload on the company's suborbital accelerator launch system to provide valuable information to NASA for potential future commercial launch opportunities. The suborbital accelerator is intended to pave the way for the next iteration of Spin Launch's technology, a still to be built orbital accelerator, which will be three times larger than the structure in New Mexico. SpinLaunch said it will begin building its orbital launch pad this year at a yet-to-be-made public coastal location. Although SpinLaunch is developing a new rocket launching technology, it's really in the satellite business, since the booming low Earth orbit satellite or LEO industry will be the company's target market. SpinLaunch's technology is not suitable for human spaceflight because of the high g-forces generated in the centrifuge. Space launch is ultimately a transportation industry. Providing low-cost, inexpensive access to an unaccessible place like space is similar to when we achieved advances in transportation such as the steamship, you know, which allowed you know, access of you know, movement of massive amounts of goods and, and cargo and, and people to entirely new continents. And civilization emerged. Morgan Stanley expects the satellite business to be about one half of the $1 trillion space economy by 2040. In all of history, every country combined, we've launched less than 10,000 satellites since the beginning of the space age. We're coming up on launching that many satellites per year, you know, in, in, in the short kind of coming few years. And those will be supported by thousands of companies doing a variety of missions, you know, across every industry imaginable. Since 2000, the average cost of launching an object into space has fallen dramatically thanks to new launch providers such as SpaceX and others. SpaceX's rideshare program, in which satellite operators reserve space on a rocket with unrelated operators, now lists costs as low as $1.1 million to place up to 200 kilograms into sun-synchronous orbit, with additional mass costing $5,500 per kilogram. Spin Launch said the widespread adoption of its technology would revolutionize the satellite deployment industry by bringing the cost per launch down to $2,000 per kilogram during early commercial operations. The company said they expect to be able to drive costs into the hundreds of dollars per kilogram as the system matures. But Spin Launch's success is not assured, and some are skeptical the technology can ever be deployed at scale successfully. I hope they do get it to work, but from a physics standpoint, it's, it's a pretty difficult physics problem. The first problem I think of when we're spinning things really fast is, you know, if the arm breaks, the energy that you've stored in there, especially with spinning it up so fast, is basically a bomb waiting to blow up, and the pieces just go flying in all different directions. Number two, if, especially if you have a tube launch, uh, a window for the rocket to go out, you, you have to time that just right so that it releases at the right point. If not, it's gonna hit the wall and that's gonna degrade the integrity of the whole thing and it's just gonna blow up. If you wanna get into orbit, you're gonna essentially have as much energy in it as you would a chemical rocket. It's just not chemical energy, it's rotational kinetic energy. Spin Launch has raised $120 million to date from prominent investors. The company also signed a contract with the Pentagon's Defense Innovation Unit to test and deploy Spin Launch's responsive launch services. The company says it is on target to place satellites in orbit and deliver payloads for spacefaring endeavors by 2025.